dude. All Just right. be normal. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it for real. Hey, y'all, what's up? Welcome to the second episode of the Inkbox Podcast. Thank you for all the things you had to say about the first one. This next one, we got Stephen Landrum here, Meatbag. Meat. And we got Ben fucking Talty Meat. here. We're going to hang out bullshit a little bit. Yeah, but we're going to start the show now. Had to be done. Oh, did. What's up, y'all? Ready what up? Straight from straight from being at a show last night together to being hungover at this table. It's good to see you. Yeah, like I witnessed all your demises last night. It's yeah, great. same. It's did. Yeah, you were you were sober. Yeah, I was stone cold sober. Stone. God damn it. I was the just three high. of us did no, not. I was Cali marijuana. sober. You were Cali sober. That's yes. Fair. You didn't drink. I don't drink. You don't drink. Oh damn. I haven't yeah. had a drink since May of last year. See, I was do. I, I was doing the not drinking thing. For a second, but see, something happened with that. Dude, party on? It was, yeah. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, but it's a good thing. But we've got Ben Talty here. Hello. I like to have uh, like to have people that aren't in bands, so you can you know yeah commentate from that angle. Ben's pretty what, much in everyone's band. I don't know. I don't know what that move is. That's I know what that that's, move is. I know what that like, movement I'm trying, is. I'm not trying to call you out on that though. But that's a movement. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Right, yeah, no. It's the I'm children's gonna, event. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. It's an all ages show. <laughs> this this is not an all ages show. We're I trying said, to oh, prep yeah. you for an all ages oh, show. Oh yeah, it's gonna. It starts that way. I said just, fuck in the first seven seconds of this show's career. You did yeah, you did. Yeah. You, ble- you blessed it. I did. You blessed it. I, I heard it. it. You I fucked did. it. But, fucked it. Fucked it right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> God. But anyway, so uh, how did you like get into the whole? Booking and shit, and shit thing. Um, I kind of fell into it. It's it's a very long, complicated story, but um, I mean, I I got picked up by some of the best in the industry at the time. Um, I, you know, ended up kind of just not maybe not interning for them, but like I kind of got paid when I got paid or whatever. Um, but it was just one of those decisions you have to make. Like, and I can tell you from experience, like I've been doing this twenty five years. Um. Like you either have to do it or don't like there's no it's not a hobby like it i've now i've finally now in the past like five ish years like i've gotten like actual money for this like i get paid for it so yeah. it's, it's a blessing for me but um but yeah this years. is like so 20 years of it being a hobby <laughs> yeah off and on like spending my own money going broke like doing all this dumb shit and it it was i mean it's cool like it's the best job ever i don't know what else i'd be doing if i wasn't doing this mm-hmm. It's it's weird because like you pick up a lot of skills that you it's weird to translate into another career or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably do this till till I'm dead. But um, but yeah, like I got I got in with some dudes that were really um, killing it at the time. Um, they offered to like take me under their wing and kind of show me how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up moving in with one of the dudes, and like that was like a whole other experience because like that was where our office was set up or whatever. But. Um, but yeah, it's just been it's been a wild ride. Like people remember stuff from shows that I did like twenty years ago. And it's just, you know. Mm-hmm. But um but yeah, I mean shout out to Will Anderson, shout out to Sam Mean, shout out to Mike Jarmus. Um, it's been a ride. Um, I mean, shout out to a lot of people that have just, you know, mm-hmm. I kinda pick up on stuff and and just ride it out. But um I think now I'm I'm pretty decent at it. I think you're pretty good. Uh Last night was pretty Everybody good. Everybody fucking knows yeah, you. Not You're bad. A, yeah. Pillar not bad. Of the community. Yeah. I try to. I just, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mr. I'm pillar. A, yeah. I go fucking He's pillar. a fucking pillar <laughs> yeah. in this community. God damn it. Last night was fun as fuck. Yeah. You oh, guys, it's a great guys, show. You guys sounded great as fuck. Yeah. It was the first time I was, I, I've seen you live and I was kind of afraid to do it because I'm like, I don't want to be discouraged to play music any more than I already am. Like fucking. Yeah. Well, we should talk about your ink box session. You guys. Yeah, bro. You guys were awesome last night, and you guys also had Steve Caballero sitting at the bar watching your set, which did not happen during our set. So just let that one. So let, take, take we that had, win. We had Steve take Caballero that and God watching. Uh, yeah, yeah you had. Hey, that. you let Jesus take the wheel last night, yeah, bro, and look did. what happened. You know, I liked it. He, yeah, he dug us. But anyway, like, with your inkbox session, fucking. You know, you knocked one out because uh, it used to be like uh, me and Geo knocked it right in the box. Yeah. Well, yeah, you not fucking <laughs> right out of the stick box. <laughs> right. Yeah, I need you to turn off <laughs> Steven's microphone from now. On. <laughs> 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 Fucked it right. This is the not box. this is not the pun box, sir. But no, fucking, uh, you came in because it was me and Geo. We were like 
we, we were looking at the plays and stuff like that, and I was like, Gio had like 150 plays. I had 152 plays. So I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then like years went up and like years like fucking knocked both of ours out. Let me so, tell you my reaction to yeah. seeing yours because that was my introduction to you <laughs> as a person. I was like, fuck this dude. Because... <laughs> Like your your voice is so good, dude. Like you you have like a naturally Stop. like no for real. You have like a very naturally like uh like a good voice. What I would call a good voice. I appreciate it, but I'm a fucking drummer, dude. Are like you? that yeah, I'm a drummer. I, I drum for contradiction. That's that's how I even got into this whole thing. I drum for squared and contradiction. So that's where it came from. And I just sat behind the kit and watched Billy and Geo for a decade and you know, fucking they're brilliant people that I learned from. So Sorry. You know, I appreciate it, but I got to give them credit because, you know, you just, you just and then also, you know, my little stint in Franks and Deans, like those guys playing with them for a year and a half, two years, they have like everything locked in. Every little bit and every aspect of that band is locked in, whether it comes to the vocals, to the stage presence, to uh, the way the van is loaded, to the way we ride the shows. It's all fucking everything is there's a rhyme for a reason. And, like, I just learned how to sing, you know, hanging in that band, too. Like, they're all trained singers. So that's just these last few years, uh, well, I guess, like, 10 years, I've learned from all of those dudes and just now wanted to start my own band. And I've applied, I'm applying everything I've learned to this band. I like that. You're Steven, doing, you're Steven, doing well. Yeah, Steven Ledrum, the Dave Girl of Phoenix. Gifted and humble. <laughs> Are you single? No, married. Damn. I've been married for. Uh, get off my show. I've been married for <laughs> five years. Fucking all the like love and happiness. Get the fuck off my. Like. <laughs> no, I met my wife. Uh, I I lived in. That's where Squared started. Squared started in uh, Payson uh, with Gio, myself, and uh, and uh, one a buddy of ours, Alex Simmons. We uh, were just kind of like hanging on the porch, jamming acoustics, and uh, I was playing like Cajon, doing backup vocals, kind of mm -hmm. singing along with Gio. And at the time, I was a huge Nirvana fan, so I was always like down. I was always down to do like the high, you know, pitch like background vocals, kind of like vocals. the way Dave did with you know Kurt. And that's that's where I kind of got started singing and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I hung out in Pace and with Geo for fucking ever, and that's where we come from. That's where you know. That's where yeah. you guys are originally from. Shout out Geo, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I love you, dog. Fuck that guy. But <laughs> he said the same thing about you. Very funny. I like it. It's what it is. But anyway, so, um, yeah, we started in pace, and, and it was a great time, dude. A, a lot of learning, a lot of learning from there, you know, underneath the learning tree. Well, I like it. You're doing, doing pretty dope, dope Thank shit. Thank you. Doing pretty dope shit. And you guys are too, man. Last night was fucking dope. You it guys was. were cool. How was, how was hanging out at the door? How did we sound from out there? Good. Yeah. Yeah, real good. Was it? All right, sweet. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the door guy You know approves. I love you. You know yeah. I love you. Yeah. 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 Door guy approves. I was a Steve Caballero's band kicked ass. I'd never listened to him before. I didn't even know that's that. urethane for the listeners. Yeah, urethane. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Slash the Steve Caballero autograph signing session. Yeah. Oh my god, I know. I'm sure the other people in his band realize it. It's it's the Steve Caballero band. <laughs> like, so yeah, like, like, I, even, I mean he's he's definitely a, a key part of that band, and he I'm surprised with his he's kind of you know craggy from skateboarding his whole yeah. life or whatever, yeah. but like he's like real good in that band, and I'm just like, all right, cool, man. He's he's very like wholesome to talk to too. Like he's like the most like humble dude yeah. ever. It yeah. was, it was great. Yeah, I dug that. Yeah, he was. Uh, that was the second time I've ever met him. I met him. Uh, we went to punk. My wife and I went to Punk and Drublick Fest. Um, and uh, I met him then. He was very nice. And last night, I. I was hanging out at my merch booth, and he was hanging out at his merch booth, and I, I had to do it. I, I went up to him, and I asked him, uh, hey, I know you're in high demand all the time, and I'm just going to ask you for a favor, and you know, you'd say no, obviously, but would you sign my personal skateboard? And he's like, he's like, go get it. He's like, no. So I, so, <laughs> so I ran out to the van and got, got my board, and he fucking signed it, dude. And we're we're we just talking about how we don't get autographs out in the garage yeah so well <laughs> yeah. i don't like signing them but oh, okay. when when you're playing a show with steve caballero and you started skating at like nine ten years oh, old yeah no, because that. of like steve and tony hawk and like andrew reynolds and rodney mullen like that that was a surreal moment for me last night dude, yeah and we got skate, offered dude, we should tread when we got offered i haven't skated a long time these days i just ride because i'm really i'm way too big yeah, for now the he's board. a poser 
Yeah, I just I have a longboard that I just cruise. I don't I don't like do tricks or anything anymore because I'm way too big for that shit, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, well, for me personally, I know there's like big ass dudes who can like bust shit out that are that yeah. is dope. But I'm not. Seen I am there. not that guy. <laughs> I put my time. Yeah. yeah, Ben hit that like 15 minute nose manual. That's kind of kind of shit we miss. Let's see. But yeah, I shot I shot I I shot my shot last night with Steve Caballero, and he said, "Go get it." Nice. He, yeah, he, you and he I have did two that whole different thing definitions too. of shot my like, shot. Go get it. And bro, like, go get it, yeah, Steve Caballero. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I I ran outside, dude, like a fucking child and looked fucking at my Steve wife. Like, Steven's like, I hooked and up I was with like, Steve Caballero last I night. I ran up to <laughs> her. I was <laughs> like, Steve's going to sign my fucking board. And she and she knew the drill. She's like, all right, I got to meet this asshole at the fucking merch booth so I can take a picture for him. So I can share it to social media. It's a good picture. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw it. You look very happy. Yeah. I was very happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like... And of course, Steve is like, that's the happiest I've ever seen him in ever. <clears throat> right. He's just like, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, that's Steve. When I was like nine, 10 years old, I watched pornography and skate videos. That's it, dude. So <laughs> sometimes both at the same yeah. time. Just you know. naked dude skate. Yeah. I had a brother and we had two separate <laughs> nice. TVs and we had porn on one TV and skate on the other TV. Wow. Get the nose man. Oh, I don't know. Porn on my that. TV, skate on <laughs> his Nose manual is yeah. different now. Is it? Oh man, so a question I'm actually super looking forward to actually like something I'm actually looking forward to talking about because the point of this podcast was uh You've hated every second of this so I've far. I've hated huh? yeah. I mean every time Adam talks. This is the peak. But no, so because we were doing this peaking right now. We were doing the sessions and we could only really like have people on that like played music and shit like that. But there's other people in the scene. There's obviously like sound guys and promoters and shit like that. Yeah. But okay. I did want to talk to you about like when you deal with bands and stuff trying to book a show, what are like some do's and do like some shit that pisses you off where you're like, nah, fuck that. Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Because it? <laughs> it, 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 and because like names. I don't want to just air out like all these dudes that I'm like. I mean, okay, we're, we don't we don't have to name them personally. Yeah, it's just like, like they'll know if you're talking about them. But it's nobody like, knows look, me. man, like it, everybody's argument is always, um, you know, the promoter should get people to the show, the band should be, you know, play and then get paid for that. That premise totally cool. Like I'm not against that whatsoever. But like if you're not involved in the process of like promoting your own show that you're on like fuck right on I, I, don't, I don't know i don't know what to tell you like it's just in my head i'm like look man like if you're not involved in the process like don't bother like it should just, be I, I, yeah and it's like not a all, and forget it, it, it yeah. it's weird because like there was and i won't beat this to death but there was a thread on facebook over the past couple of days talking about you know people's you know, guarantees versus whatever. And mm-hmm. people were like that, you know, fuck that. Like uh, pay, pay to play. I'm like, no dude, it's not pay to play. Like I, if you don't set, if you're like, I'm not selling tickets, I'm like, okay, cool. But then you risk not getting paid. Cause yeah. like, where's that money coming from? Then? Yeah. Like, I don't just have it in my pocket. Yeah. Like I got to pay, you know, there was a, a dude that posted something that was like, he was looking for a show. And then the, the venue responded to him like, okay, cool. You want to do a show here? Great. Like the rent is like 500 bucks. Like, you know, do your thing or whatever. And mm-hmm. I'm, and he was so out of pocket about that. I'm just like, dude, like, how do you think these places survive? And then every, somebody commented like, oh, like you sell, you know, beer and food and what I'm like, yeah, they do that to pay rent. Like if there wasn't a show here, they would still have to pay your rent. Yeah. Like, and that's how they operate. They have like a bar, you know, some of these DIY, like all ages spaces, like, I don't know how they do it and that's okay. Like it's, it's lost on me and maybe I should learn a few things about stuff like that. But yeah, it's just like if, I mean, if we're talking about do's and don'ts, I'm like, look, like if you want to play a show, I mean, first of all, I've seen a lot of bands, Mm -hmm. like a lot, um, you know, local, national, otherwise. And like, you know, first of all, if you're sending, this is my thing. So don't take this personally, but like if you're sending people like, Hey, I want to play a show, like an email or whatever. Great. Email is great. You know, send links to your social media, send links to your band camp, whatever. Like, please don't send me Spotify links. I will eviscerate you on email. <laughs> like, I will I will just destroy you because it's like a whole thing. Anyway, um, so, yes, be prepared. Like, an email, an unsolicited email of a band that you've never worked with before should be basically like an EPK. You should just yeah. throw it out there. If you have an EPK, even better. But, like, give all the information. Be like, this is what we look like. This is what, you know, not that I give it shit what people look like necessarily but like are you pretty yeah i mean there's definitely like a fitting into a bill thing yeah you know? it's just like there's a lot of bands that complain about not getting on shows and they hold the promoter or whoever or the scene like they they take it very personally and i kind of get that but at the same time it's like yo like 
they don't figure it out. They, they'll talk shit for five years. They'll be like, why aren't, we, aren't things working out for me? I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. like, figure it out, bro. Like, like, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it, not that it's a super loaded question, but like there are a lot of caveats to like oh, yeah. booking and like <clears throat> promoting and stuff like that. Like when I ask bands to sell tickets, like I don't feel like that's like everybody's like, oh, pay to play. I'm like, no, dude, like you don't have to sell tickets. But the other side of that coin is like, you know, I'll have to figure out a way for you to get paid if at all. So, you know, um, just, it's like with most things in life. Like just, if you don't put yeah, your work like, into it, like, like be involved yeah. in the process. Like yeah. it's as much, you know, like it's those damn millennials. It, uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to work <laughs> these days. Nobody cares a wallet anymore. God yeah, damn it. Everybody's <laughs> quiet quitting and rage applying or what the fuck ever. <laughs> rage applying. I've been quiet. I've been quiet quitting for 25 years. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've like, I, I've been loudly quitting. I just quitting. heard of that term. Quiet quitting. Oh, I'm great. like, it's what? just, it's so it's passive. It's just doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> it's just doing your job to the bare minimum yeah. and whatever. Like I want, like I know in all my jobs, I would like, you've been I know. quiet quitting. Yeah. 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 It's, it's where you where you work just enough to not get fired, right. which is basically that's what your I basic like that's requirement. What I'm just that's so stoned job, all the yeah. time. I don't know much about shit. <laughs> You're I don't know right shit now. about fuck. <laughs> Always, yeah. I don't know shit about fuck. <laughs> I was say. But I yeah, know. it's I don't know. I mean, yeah, I could I could talk all day on that point, but um, I mean, just being involved in the process of wanting the show to do better overall, not just for you, is a huge component of what I do, what I expect other people to do. Like I, I just don't feel, and maybe I'm different than other people, but I just don't feel like that's asking too much of people. No, like it's like, I just no. kind of, I feel like it's kind of a dick bag thing. Like just be like, Hey, like, uh, you're uh, book us a show here, get people there for us. We'll see you there. It's like, Did no you, motherfucker, like fucking like promote your own shit too. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's not the way it works. Yeah. Can you imagine a band being in like an interview? Like just, just coming like, in and be like, Hey, uh, we're going to do a show here. Like, why the fuck aren't there people here? Like, what the fuck dick bag? Go like promote your shit. Like, yeah. yeah. You, like, like, why aren't there I, people here? Be you. Yeah. You, <laughs> you're the reason why other bands brought people. Nobody's watching you. Cause you didn't bring people. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and I mean, when people pitch like, you know, bigger stuff, like agents pitch me stuff and they're like, we want X amount of money. And I'm like, you know, that requires a little bit of insight into, you know, maybe how the last show did or what their popularity is at this point. So, like, when they throw out a number at you, you're like, mm, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I won't get into politics of, like, how much people make or whatever, but, you know, punk bands, gutter mouth, um, you know, urethane, whatever. Like, they're like, hey, we have a specific number that we're working with, and they throw it at me, and I'm like, yeah, okay. You guys know what you're worth. Yeah. You don't pitch it too high. Like, it's just, it's one of those things that I've done 10 times and it's fine. Last night was great. Last night everybody got paid and I'm just, I'm cool with that. Speaking of it's fine. <laughs> How's Is that it going? fine? It's fine. I, like I said, I made that joke like 40 times last night. <laughs> was, it's, I think it's probably been said already on this uh, episode. I'm going to start times. a band called It's, yeah. a <laughs> it's a Thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing now. There's it's a, a band that, that just started following me on like TikTok or something. And the name of the band is like, uh, the name of this band is John. That's the name. That's their band. They're like, there was a band named James. Yeah. The, the, James. the band name is the name of this band is John. And I was like, I like, that's, that's a, that's a cool, that's an eye catching name. Like I'm going to check them out for sure. Shout out to them. If you guys ever fucking see this, I don't it's even know where you're from. Bold like, choice. You respect. got more space on your records for artwork. Yeah. Um, you know, four letter name. Yeah. John. Or you can make it three. They should change. If it's spelled with four letters, they should change it and make it three. There's yeah, some, true. There's that choice. There's some really good like band names. I got there like clever because I like I like want anecdotes. So the anecdotes. So I wanted initially when I first moved here, I didn't want to do music. Right. When I moved here in 2019, I didn't want to do music. Then um, fucking started uh, writing with Steve and shit like that. And I was really stuck. I was like, if I'm going to be in a band, I want it to be called X-Ray Cat. From uh, Freddie Got Fingered. You know, like the, oh, the, the, the cat that can see through wooden doors? I was like, I'm going to name my band X-Ray Cat. So I run that by Steve. Steve looks it up. He's like, yeah, there's already like two bands named that. So I was like, uh, fuck. But we ended up with the Manicdotes. Manicdotes is cool as fuck. Anecdotes is cool. Yeah, yeah I dig it's that. A word we ended up with It's Fine, Why It Really Pushed That. That was the first yeah, song. Yeah, come too? So we, we uh, that was the first song we had for the band. And... Is that the album name too? This is the song. It's yes. fine. Off the album, it's fine. And, and we wrote, <laughs> and we pretty much wrote all of the songs like that we have right now. Almost all the songs we have right now before we decided on the name. But why it really pushed for the name? He just thought that uh, it's uh, it's it's just a very marketable name, you know. And I think it's and, definitely stands. And that's yeah. kind of like, but you know, the the behind the curtain kind of like you know thing for me personally. <laughs> I think it's such a cool name because. I get to admit, if I, 
I like the name of the band because if I get to go to practice or go play a show with my friends, then everything in life is fine. So mm. it's it's fine means that to me. Dude, that's so cool. You know, it's so it's got all these different layers, and that's kind of I don't know when you're when you're trying to be a band and market yourself and do all that, you got to think of that kind of stuff. So I went with I trusted Wyatt, and and it now, was a good call. Good now, call, Wyatt. Like, you know. It's not all about marketing and all that shit for me, but like you got to think like when you're coming up with a band name and you're fucking 32, 33 years old, you better make it good because you've done this <laughs> quite a few times. I've been playing music since I was 14 years old, so better figure out something you or get at the, least like, get good at some point if yeah, I'm just going to yeah, keep Huba's doing tank. it. Yeah. <laughs> looking at you, <laughs> looking at you Hooba Stank. Chumba Wumba. <laughs> My band, The Accident Theory, played with Hooba Stank one time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did the Mesa Music the reason? Festival. Uh, the Mesa Music Festival nah, was you the reason. The, it went over his head. No, no, it was the reason. I, I was with that. Yeah, you were okay. I was gonna yeah. say that's why we don't let stone people on the show. But anymore. that's that was the reason. <laughs> that was the reason for me. See, the that reason. one went over his head. No, it didn't. No, the reason was it wasn't the reason wasn't you. All right, yeah. that's enough Hoobah stank. <laughs> yeah, no more oh, well, Hoobah stank. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm putting a, I'm putting a <laughs> the kibosh. Yeah, yeah like when I was, right I remember like when I was like. 15, 16 people were starting bands, stuff like that. You hear like the dumbest names. Like this this one dude who's like trying to be all dark and stuff. I remember him coming up to me. He's like, My band's name is the Bloody Hearts of Darkness. And I was like, What the fuck? Like, my first horrible. my like first band name generator on like yeah, Facebook yeah, maybe, or whatever. Yeah. They're like, here's an app. Like uh, I really my first band, band name, it, name from, from, a from my full yeah. band in Payson was Tree. Yeah, I, I that's what I'm saying. About it. Yeah, that's, shit yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> shit name. Well, but like it's funny though, because like it's fine, it's like it, it has kind of that energy. It's just like, it's simple and it's something that like gets said in speech, but like sticks out. Like, I feel like that's why I like that. Kind yeah. The band of name definitely a, stuck out a lot. Like, yeah. To like, me. I fucking love the band name and I love writing songs about like mental health and shit. Cause I suffered with like fucking anxiety. And Dude, depression. that's what all the Manicdote songs are about. So like, and, They're and all I've, sad if you listen to them, I, I saw, I figured this out in the last like five years of my life that uh, like, just like about anxiety and depression and like my past and learning from all of my childhood trauma and shit like that. Yeah. And going to therapy and like practicing with medicine and stuff like that. And just trying to figure out what works best for me to be the best human possible and like make personal life changes as well to, to, uh, to just better myself and just be a better human and like be a better fucking family man and, and a better friend and stuff. And all of that is just kind of like moving into this band. Uh, that's mm. what I'm starting to write songs about now. So it's, I used to write songs about like, I used to like write breakup songs all the time. I would be that's in a, I'd like, be in a good relationship and I would just time, like yeah. write breakup songs. And now I have this like new thing to write about. And I'm also like a big fan of like metalcore. Like, so yeah. I love like the positive energy kind of shit that like August Burns Red does or like Kill Switch Engage. So I I don't know. I I I love playing punk rock and that's the music I write. So I just try to like bring some of that energy into that, you know, into yeah, so this. There's, there's a theme like with all of the Manic Dead songs, like I started going to therapy and shit like that. And uh, I feel like a lot of people write songs from a perspective of like, oh, this thing is fucked up because this person X, Y, Z. So every Manic Dead song or like the gist of them are all about something that I dealt with where I was the problem in therapy. And then uh, I've got this song called Stupid Shit that a couple, a bunch of people like, and they, it sounds like this romancy song, right? So people are like, oh, I dedicated that to my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, you really shouldn't. If you like, <laughs> it's hilarious. Cause uh, the song is about, is basically about um, like, like dating somebody and accepting being in a toxic problematic relationship just because you're codependent and don't want to die alone. So some dude's like, oh, I dedicated your song to my girlfriend. It's like, oh, basically you told told your girlfriend, like, oh, you're here, so, so you'll do. I guess I'll take you. Like, <laughs> Watching Inkbox sessions on YouTube for more info. <laughs> some of them are already on YouTube. Yes. Don't forget to smash that like button. <laughs> Finally, I got to say it. Yeah. I've always was like, yo, hey, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> I got another doing? video for you today. <laughs> Um, all right, we've yeah. got a new segment on the show. Oh, yeah. We'll, so Adam we'll just this. brought this up. So Adam wants to talk yeah, about this. It, I'm going to let him take it. Take it. It's, it's cliche, but it's like I'm always super interested in hearing what people have to say about this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be called Adam's Island. And we'll probably end up writing a song for this bit. Called Adam's Island. Called Adam's Island. Cue the song we'll right now. Like if, we, if, just, if we've written it by the time it comes out, cue the song. Oh, we'll do this once these guys leave, I think. Um, but yeah. It's playing we'll, right now. Let's Pretend talk about playing. You guys okay. are familiar with the concept of a desert island album? Yes. If you could choose one album to listen to, that is the only thing you could listen to for the rest of your life. Ooh, what you that got? That is that is a solid question. Um, I wish I'd asked Gio this. 
Yeah. I'll call him right now. <laughs> get, uh, get him see, on the some phone. people get fucking get stressed out. Get him on the phone. He'll help me decide yeah. for sure. Well, I want to hear what Ben has. You got to pick Ben. Just one. Just one. And people will judge you. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing is like, everyone's like, oh, you do like punk rock shows and you do like metal shows. I'm like, I'm going to pick like a fucking jazz album or something. Well, yeah, I'm just going okay, like, yeah, so yeah. to be like, that's what's going to happen. Real quick aside, the whole reason I thought this would be interesting is because have you guys seen the movie Green Room? Uh, have I seen it? It's a fucking great movie. Definitely okay, watch that movie. It's so. about a punk band on tour that ends up doing some crazy shit. I haven't like, seen it. Oh, dude, you, you all cool. have to watch it. It's so fucking punk band good. on tour. I don't want to. I want to like describe it too much because it would spoil it. But just watch it. Green Room. Uh, but they're like on a podcast and they're talking about Desert Island albums and they all list like you know Misfits, fucking Black Flag and shit. Who would and then like that? later in the movie after they've gone through some trauma, they just are, are all sitting around, all exasperated and shit, and they just start naming like weak ass albums as like they're actual desert island albums and it's like such a fucking true moment in that movie for me i'm like fuck yeah like worm says like mariah Carey imagine and only like, only word. being able to listen to one black flag album for the rest of your life yeah no that wouldn't be that great no. i would i not. like them but... i feel like i'm living that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um okay sorry to answer your question um let me think real fast Mike, i could what, go first too if you what want. Do, i've got mine yeah go ahead yeah well mine mine is very cliche my, mine's gonna be leave home by ramones Imagine only listening to one Ramones album for the rest of your life. Well, you're, 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 you only need to listen to one Ramones album because they all sound exactly the fucking same. And they're just okay. Disagree. Yeah. But the first three albums definitely all sound the same. Yeah, well, but th there is a fucking Ramones song for every goddamn human emotion that you yeah. will experience. Yeah, you just have to feel that emotion while listening I feel like to they one write, Ramones song. You know what, Justin? <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like they write the titles before they actually write the song. Oh, for sure. They're just like, here's a thing. And you're like, this is the name of the song. And we got to build a song around it now. 100%. I get that, though. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, Ramon's like, yeah, I get it. It's just like there, there's like a, a, a Ramon song for like everything like I feel. And it's like, you know, they can be like a warm blanket feeling for me if I need that. Or like a get fucking hyped like on a summer fucking afternoon song. Like they, it's, yeah. they do it all for me. Like that should be a Desert Island album. Like a, an album that like gives you everything you could need out of music potentially. Right, yeah. We'll, we'll do my, my, I'll do my next letter. Get to you guys so you guys can think of it because yeah. I've got so like. Mine would be uh, the 59 sound by the Gaslight Anthem. That's a good one. That would be, for me, uh, uh, like just as an album, I think it flows like it's it's the best album at being an album. Like not individual song wise or anything like that because they're all great. Like stand alone, the songs are great, but but like the rise and fall of the album is absolutely fucking perfect. Because a lot of I feel like a lot of people when we write albums, they don't really think about how the track listing is gonna go or the fall, like rise and fall vibe. Yeah, of it, they just like write a bunch of tracks and they're just like, okay, toss this on this track one, track two, shit like that. So like, definitely gaslight anthem, okay. fifty nine sound. Y'all got, got, got one? Well, like, yeah, I've got one. I've got one. If I have to pick one, God, I don't want to pick. You have to. But if I have to, it'd probably be Foo Fighters in your honor. Fuck yeah, that's a good one. Cause it's a two disc album, <laughs> so I'd have a lot of music yeah. for a while. Yeah. yeah, and and then it's and it's acoustic and rock, so it's like you get both. You know what I mean? So, you know, I feel that. And then drum roll, I want to. Yeah, I want to come, come up with your bends. So having having given this a tremendous amount of thought in the last <laughs> forty five seconds. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say, for the sake of this question, I'm gonna say. BC Boys licensed to ill. Dude, yeah. such a good All right, one. so because your island's going to be lit as fuck. Yeah, like, mine's yeah. going to be depressing. It's going to be like Castaway, except there's going to be like a fucking just, I don't know where the sound is coming from, but <laughs> I'm going to end up eating the record because I'm just like starving to death. Uh, but uh, that yeah, was, that, it'll be one. your Wilson. Yeah, it's fine. It'll just be like <laughs> okay, a CD yeah. just sitting there, yeah. like talking to it and shit. <laughs> and the glare coming off the CD because I'm like, oh my God. That'll be but, how you start your fires oh, yeah, with the glare one. from the CD. Hey, yo, Steve. Smart. Smart. Steve, what, al al what album would you listen to? Violent Femmes. Violent Femmes. Violent Femmes. Right, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. No, he just didn't. He already had that queued up. Didn't even have to think about it. Well, he thought I about him, it. I caught him off guard, too, because well, he, he thought about it longer than all about of us. Band it was him and then you and then me. Yeah. yeah, we should prep future guests for this and, like, text them beforehand. Be like, come with the. Uh, fuck no, <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool to, no, I, I, it's I cool like to figure it out yeah. on the spot. Dude. Yeah. That that Because it's it's etched in stone now. Like, you'll listen to this episode... 40 years in the future and be like, fuck, I answered wrong. You can't wrong. give somebody <laughs> time to think about that because then they're going to lie. They're going to try to say true. something cool. Yeah. 
Like, cause if I would have said no effects, so long, and thanks for all the shoes, you know I would have been bullshitting, bro. <laughs> Come on, just sitting there with a Foo Fighters tattoo, and he's not gonna say Foo Fighters. Fuck off. Yeah. Man. Just trying to sound punk, but like, oh, it's definitely discharge. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna like, bring a discharge <laughs> album. <laughs> And if anybody comes on here and says screwdriver, you're getting kicked yeah. out. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Charger, bro. That That's the fucking record. If you say that's screwdriver, first of all, why do I even know you enough to let you to ask you to be on my podcast? Well, that, that's what I'm that's saying. That's why you should, you should lead with that question and then be like, just kick him off the show. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like, nope, nope, sorry, you're done. The last thing I want is somebody coming on my podcast being like, by the way, whites are the superior race, so drop that down. I'm like, get the fuck out of my shit. Why wow. already came on your podcast. <laughs> Who'd you, who? What's that? You came. What's the next he, question? He came, on the, <laughs> he came on your podcast, I think, is what he's trying to oh, say. Oh, you came on. Um, oh, yeah. okay. I was like, I'm here. All right, yeah. I feel it. You were thinking. Did, so, no, so did you? You mean, were thinking. You were so, thinking. It's all right. The uh, first, everything is equated to yeah, it's fine. Just, just want to let you go. It's, it's you guys fine. know. Jot this down in history. Sorry, I hit your microphone. It's but fine. the first ever orgasm on the show. Yeah. I like it. But anyway, so speaking of shows, you used to do the you you did the Geo and Meatbag show with fucking, I did yeah with I did what, what was the other guy's name the Geo and Meatbag show Geo <laughs> and Meatbag show with the roadie and Cash Cash ended up like towards like the end like the last year he's a good friend of ours um yeah we just did punk rock pro wrestling that's pretty much all we used to talk about we had we've had wrestlers on we've had punk rockers on like we've had Guttermouth and like Chris Daly on from uh, implants and authority zero and all the million other bands that that dude drums for and uh we've had like ej sparks on which is like a local wrestler here yeah. in phoenix this that, is the second episode he's been talked about like, so yeah, I feel like no, oh, he's, oh on, he's yeah. cool like Gio Shout and out I, daniel torch again Gio and i went to a show uh, uh uh a wrestling show at talking stick uh, arena or, or whatever footprint center and uh recently and he was like in one of the opening matches and we had no idea like it's a really big show at an arena and this dude's wrestling like it's like if you see one of us you know what i mean because we're yeah. here playing clubs he's over there wrestling at the fucking nile and shit so it's no different you know mm -hmm. and then you see him um at like the arena and you're like oh shit dude that's awesome like he fucking gets to play an arena he gets to play an arena gig that's what that is you know mm -hmm. it's the same thing like if you've seen us opening up for a big band so uh, we would like interview guys like him and we just, you know, we'd shoot the shit about like, uh, gaming and just all sorts of like random shit. It was a very random podcast. That was, it was an excuse for us to hang out for five years in a row, at least once a week and get drunk. That's basically what this is. Yeah. I mean, we got that. Like what's the, so since we're in, and then we all quit drinking, so it's boring and we don't. You know, we're on podcast anymore. Oh, yeah, so that, <laughs> that, that's why I started drinking again. I was like, I want a lively podcast. Yeah, you got to have like, a good you know? Yeah, you got to have you know, a good I went, podcast. I, I went, I'm like, Drink. I went to my AA sponsor, and I was like, yo, bro, I'm like, no, nah, it's for the... You'll just sorry. sit here like it's this. It's for the culture. For the record, it's 12 in the afternoon, and we are drinking. Yeah. So doing the... What's, like, the worst thing, that, like, the funniest thing that happened? Or, like, you ever have, like, a storm out or piss anybody off on the podcast or anything like that? Mm, no storm out. I fell through my chair one time on the show. That was pretty funny. That's awesome. Uh, dude, there's so many moments where like I would I would be crying and laughing. Like Geo, Geo is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, he, he asks so, every show Joe if he uses flashlights on a show. Yeah. Speaking of, that's amazing. Out Shout out to flashlight. <laughs> Shout out flashlight. We that's will amazing. fuck one on this podcast. Live. <laughs> yeah, um, we're trying to get that that flashlight money. Yeah. I have I have a wife. My wife is in the. <laughs> You're like I have the a flashlight. <laughs> well, my wife is in the mine. sex toy industry. She makes huh? sex toys for a very big company that I don't want to shout out because they ain't paying us. Yeah. Well, so yeah. you guys. Yeah. So Steven's wife, uh, call flashlight real quick yeah. for us. Yeah, forward them a link. Yeah, Lady Meats. Well, no, like uh, call him up. Lady I'm, I'm, is that what it's called, that's Lady what, Meats? That's what everybody calls my wife. They call her Lady Meats. They call my mom Mama Meats, Mama and meats. then I call Mama my meats. yeah right Mama Meats. <laughs> <laughs> that's what like there's, there's that's not, what Geo calls. Me. I shouldn't say like everybody, but like I was Geo. Say, the Mama Meats had a sexual connotation, and then you said it about your mom. No, Mama Meats is a fuck. Yeah, yeah, Mama Meats. It got kind of weird at first. I was like, "Oh, people call your wife like Lady Meats because she's like sex toy stuff." And then they're like, "Also, my no. mom is Mama Meats." So she, I was like, "Is this just like some family sex toy business?" Hey, <laughs> so it's <a> mafia. <laughs> yeah, it's just a sex bunch of mafia. bags yeah, of meat. Sex toy, sex toy mafia. Yeah. But anyways, that got off track. <laughs> fuck flashlights. <laughs> Sorry. So what you say? Fuck flashlights. That's right. what we do here on the Apex. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's that's what I meant. We have yeah. normal sized heads. No, we don't. Well, I do. Fucking flashlights. See, yeah. that's a band name. Fucking flashlights. 
fucking I don't feel like that's lights. very marketable, though. Fucking flesh. It just depends what How you're trying to do. You could abbreviate it as FF. Nobody else I'm sure that. you can get a lot of punk shows with that name. Yeah. Fucking we got... I don't know. Would the, you book a band called Fucking Fleshlights if they were good? I'm pretty surprised I haven't already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like totally a band. Would. It's like, hey, we want to be booked. We're I mean, called, there was a called band the called Dick Anal Butts. Cunt, and they ended up getting. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, yeah. You got so you got to be extra good for that though. I really think. Sucks, I really think the, the best yeah. band name ever was Acid Bath. I think that's such a cool band name. Acid Bath was great. Yeah. I don't know. Drew just told me about a band called The Butts. The Butts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With a Z. Where are they? I think uh, he said they're in Texas. The Butts, also, yeah. I oh, there's a band you, yeah. called The Holy Fucks. I think that's a really cool band name, too. It is. Dude, like, I've just, like, for some reason, just because I'm on the spot now, like, I've forgotten every band name I've ever heard right now. I'm trying to think of the coolest ones. I'm like, nah, I guess I've, um, ne- I've never gas, heard of a band. The Gaslight Anthem. Um, Gaslight Anthem. That's a, the Manicdotes that's a good pretty one. sweet band That's name. a cool band name. So, yeah, that, that okay. came from a lyric in a song I'd written before. It was, like, fucking, like, uh, what was it? We'll tell witty anecdotes about times our friends were manic or something like it was something like, it. like but yeah it was a dumb line but like fucking like on the spot when x-ray cat wasn't available i was like let's fucking do the manic jokes for now and then that ended up sticking and then this guy ended up being this was just like a throwaway idea that we're like oh we'll just have this as a placeholder like but no it, it's stuck it's got, six, six squiggle. that's cool six six squiggle see it six six and then a squiggle so you guys are like two bands right we are yeah, two bands that are actually one band. Yeah, yeah. we're both the we're it's neither the, the spiders and the manic jokes. Yeah. yeah, and we've been getting a lot of push to just be one band. Yeah, I was gonna say you guys are gonna shove that together. Yeah, I think you should. I um, think you should. It's but. currently under deliberation. <gasps> yeah, we're uh, that's, fair. that's fair. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we're turning like, this on yeah. you now. Yeah, there, fuck, you guys like, are yeah. like, fuck, now yeah, we gotta like, figure yeah. out what we're gonna name our fucking band yeah, right yeah, now. Well, I was just like, fuck, I was like, I'm asking you the questions, motherfucker. You I don't, don't come on my show and grill me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Do not put me on the goddamn right, spot. Right. Just, just asking about we're, my we're swimsuit. Have already. a historical moment. We're gonna decide the new name right now. It's Night of the Manic Yeah. There you go. That's a good one. It's the Or the Spiders. The Spiders? Manic of the spider Not, yeah. dotes. Manic of the night of the sp- manic of the spider dotes. Manic, manic spiders. Yeah, manic manic spiders. Spiders. Back, We've I, talked I, about yeah. that. Yeah, because we thought about because at it's first when we first started. <laughs> You're like I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Fuck that. Like we we first started the band, we had Gene. We had Gene playing drums for us. And then we met Adam. Adam needed a guitarist and a bassist for Night of the Spiders, so we were doing that and was like, oh man, I really fucking like Adam. It'd be cool if he played with us too. And eventually it was like, okay, we'll keep it separate. We won't really like, tell people we're the same band until like, I think, but that, that fucking lid blew the fuck off because then we just fucking tell everybody. Well, yeah. people like you guys, so they're like, oh, we're going to go watch this band. Oh, they're in another band? Okay, we're going to go watch this band. So we're pretty yeah. likable. Same band. Yeah. Same pretty, band. I, it, I figured it out last night. I figured it out. Yeah. Like, I you figured, figured it like, out. You, you figured it out last night. You're the, like, the last one to figure yeah, it out. I'm the last one. Yeah. I'm late to the party. I'm always late to the party. But no, like I like it. Like since I moved here to this scene, like I like how much uh, people support the thing. I didn't do. even start listening to the police until like 2021. God damn! I know, right? They're so good though. No, they're so good. I they're know. to the police. Yeah. I don't. I don't listen to the cops at all. <laughs> right? I say, I say <laughs> Bro. no. A cat. <laughs> like yeah. That. Anyways, that's. A, I'm just saying. I'm always late to the fucking party. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I'm fucking. It's kind of. Because I'm doing the tour booking thing right now, I'm mm-hmm. I've been tasked with booking the tour. How's that going? It's going terribly. Yeah. Absolutely. You're doing, I'm, I'm you're doing your head, is yeah. your head okay? Like, oh, it's terrible. Like fucking I'm like. Because then like my my ex wife does booking and stuff like that. So like um, I messaged her that I was doing it and I was like, man, like, uh fucking, I'm having this experience. I was like, is it just because I because I'm bad at it? And she laughed. She's like, no, that's just the experience. I was like, so I felt good. That it's not that I'm bad at it. That it's just like that. It's just like that. Yeah, it's terrible. But again, talk, if you're, you're watching to, this, hit me like just and you want to teach me how to do that. I'm trying to book a tour through Texas, so yeah, you're dealing with 15 dudes like me, exactly, who have, who have 400 emails in their inbox well, right now. Also, people who are much less professional than you, on occasion. Also, less I mean, pretty. I'll take that. I don't know. Like you've got the you've got the because I know a lot of bald people with glasses, <coughs> Steve. But uh, like you pull you pull it off. Wow. You know, I Steve's not even full bald. Steve's not even full. Take Steve, your hat you, off you, right now. The hair that is there is beautiful. Is it? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, that's a full head of hair. I can't do that. You dude, all look great. Dude, what the fuck? Don't make it to where I'm the only one that should talk Steve just now, and you guys all just compliment me. I, I can't uh, shit talk like, Steve. No, no. Do I have to lead a Steve chant again? Yeah. No, fuck, fuck Steve. I love Steve. Damn. Steve's my best friend in the world. I would take a bullet 
That's not a flesh wound bullet for Steve. Everybody else, I would take a a flesh wound. I would would take a bullet for Adam, but it would have to be a flesh wound bullet. Like I'd be like, but and then also I'd never let him live it down. I'd always give him shot in the dick, dude. Fuck is wrong with you? Like if if I took a bullet for Adam, like fifty years down the road, I'd be like, hey Adam, can you give me a soda? He'd be like, no. I'd be like. Oh man, I guess I'll just take like my bullet ridden ass up to the store. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, I would, that's take, why, I would take two bullets. And that's you, why we don't have face. the Geo and Meatbag show anymore, you know? Because you shot Geo? Yeah. <laughs> He's dead. Just, we're just He's playing dead. with guns. <laughs> There's going to be a whole theory. The Avril, like, Avril Lavigne really died in like 2002. It's like <laughs> yeah. Geo died yeah. that day on the Geo and Meatbag show. We replaced him with. That's why I'm Levine. not in squared anymore. <laughs> so I'm not in squared anymore, and there's no podcast because I shot Gio in the penis. I cheddar bobbed him. <laughs> cheddar bobbed him. Jesus. All right, we'll put up an in memorium thing at the end he of this episode. He didn't cheddar bob himself. I cheddar bobbed him. And it, it'll just him. be shots of Gio's penis. Be like, RIP. And it'll Exploded. be like, in the arms of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to donate to get this man, this episode, penis. This episode dedicated to Gio's penis. <laughs> We have something sewed on there, but it's more like a pool noodle or something. You have something sewed on on where? Uh, Geo's patch of flesh because his penis exploded from the gunshot. Yeah. I, like I mean, just get one of your family sex toys and just yes. sew it. Exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. Staple, yeah, staple it on. Be perfect for it. Staple it on. It's yeah. good. That's a, that's Use a, what's at your disposal. That's a, that's a good idea. I like, and, I like and then I'll talk to my wife about what we can do to get like some type of flashlight sponsor for this podcast. So uh, yeah, Y'all so, m- we'll get you motherfuckers paid, yeah, dude. Because so, so I, I listen. That's to a lot what of, the podcast industry is all about. I listen yeah. to a lot of podcasts, and they, yeah. a lot of them kept saying they're like, "Oh yeah, the first people to reach out to us are like flashlights," and like, so yeah, I, was like I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like I'll just have like Adam and I will just. 15 minute segment Fuck of us just like trying flashlights. Oh, and then we could like have a feature with Geo fucking a flashlight with his nub. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know what's there these days. Yeah, we'll find out. Sorry, we're going to find out. Find out live next week <laughs> on the Inkbox podcast. <clears throat> That's my best friend in the whole fucking world. I'd take a bullet for that asshole. Geo's sick. Man, yeah, everybody's taking bullets for people in the show. I know. Right? Yeah. I'm Ben's like, like fuck, bro. I'm like, I'm going to go home. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you, you don't know how we end this segment? <laughs> I would take a bullet for maybe like. <laughs> you don't know yeah. how we end this segment? <laughs> we, end this, we end this whole segment. Go grab the scene. gun. <laughs> it's like the Eric. Like Russian roulette. The it's like the Eric Andre show. Be like, whack and just kill the dude sitting there. Oh, man. Oh, Adult Swim is doing like a God. live stream on YouTube of just like 24 7 Eric Andre. And it's oh, like God. my ultimate background music. <laughs> it's right. so ridiculous. Ridiculous. I fucking love it. Nice. Yeah, that dude has no boundaries. No. Zero. He's That's awesome. amazing. So toward the end of the show, I like I like to do things like talk about or promote the shit that you guys are like obviously you're booking shows and shit like that. So what shows you got coming up? Boy, um, I got a lot. My brain is just it's been scrambled for the past week. I was sick and now I'm not sick and I'm trying to catch up on everything. Mm-hmm. So um August twenty fifth, which is obviously a ways out. Um, what show are you guys playing again? Yeah, well, I'm playing that. We're playing that one. Yeah, it's uh, Gutter Mouth. Uh, this band called The Line from California. They're cool. Um, the Manic Dotes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Manic Spiders, buddy. Yeah, Manic. It's, it's Manic Dotes. It's a Manic Dotes show. It's spider not Manic dotes. Hispanic. It's Manic Spiders. Spider yeah. Dotes. Very yeah. different Very different species. Actually, yeah, put us on the show with Manic <laughs> Manic Hispanic, just so there can be two bands. With to confuse the shit yeah. out of everyone. Be like, what is happening? <laughs> and then like switch the set time so that like you guys play late and they yeah. play early. We'll take it. We're manic Hispanic dudes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yes. You, oh, you were yeah. at the so, Yucca oh, last yeah. night. So, so let's, speak, let's, let's get speaking them Speaking of, so, yeah, we, we just, we just wanna, um, we're on the flyer for that one. Yeah. 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 So That's a, that wasn't his fault. No, that wasn't his fault. It's the social media guy's fault. Ooh, oh, God. Don't. What is that top thing? No, we don't, we don't have to go into <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. I don't want to bury our social media team <laughs> because I, mm, no. okay. Well, yeah. let, let me let me put a cap on this real quick. Night of the Spiders have played a few shows that people were unaware that we were playing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's a let's move on. Shout out John White, <laughs> <laughs> Juan Blanco, and Jack White too. Because yeah. for that matter, Why? whatever. Why does it, he does he hasn't done anything to get a shout? He's got out. like blue hair and shit now. It's weird. Does he? Fuck Jack White. We're seeing that. <laughs> Jack White's doing fine on his own. He doesn't need a shout out. He doesn't even need that drummer. I thought anymore. we were saying fuck people. So I said, you said yeah. fuck Jack White. Yeah. Fuck. Well, I did. Well, no. Okay. Not. F- I love Jack White. But yeah, I'm did just, you like, just say get, fuck Jack White? He doesn't he get a free plug on our show fuck. like that. I said I'm fuck going on Jack the White. I'm actually doing, a big White Stripes fan. He's doing well on his own. I'm saying. Yeah, he'll live. If Will he ever he sees done? this and he's like, we're never playing a show with those guys. I feel like I we're, we're, we're saying, saying fuck Jack White. So no. I was like, yeah. 
And what do you got, what do you got going on? What kind of, what's, what's going on with it's, it's fine. fine has a weekend run coming up at the end of July. We are playing in Payson at the Spur Bar, and then we are playing at Hotel Monta Vista. That's going to be July Friday, July twenty eighth, uh, eight p.m. And then the next night, Saturday, July 29th, we are going to be at Hotel Monta Vista. That starts at nine thirty p.m. Uh, both free shows. It's going to be a kick ass time. It's going to be us and Vacant Skies. We're doing a weekend run together. Pop icons are going to join us for the first night. I in fucking Payson. love those dudes. Uh, yeah, so he's going to be uh, Rob. You'll be on soon. I'm stoked, dude. I'm I'm stoked, man. They're, play, they're playing fest. Finally, our album's out. So go listen to that shit. It's fine wherever you listen to music. It's good um, too. Yeah. Thank you very much good. for that. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Like sincerely. we we that we DIY'd that whole record. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that. And then we're going out to California in August. We're playing a couple shows out there. And then we'll be back in Arizona in September. We're doing a horror con kind of thing uh, in Gilbert, early September. And then we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a show at the Nile Underground sometime in September. We've got shit lined up, bro. We're booked for the rest of <clears throat> yeah, the year. Yeah, like, it's like fucking I go time. From, I asked you to promote, and you're like, two years from now, we're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're fucking, <laughs> dude. We're booked till next year. Yeah, five years from now, yeah. there's gonna be a. Like, well, you guys are like over. We have the we have some spots. We have some spots open. We try to like keep like a schedule open enough to where like if someone hits us up, like Ben or you know whoever, and is like, hey, we have got a good show. We need a band for. We think you guys would be a good fit. Yeah. Or if there's something that we see we want to get on, we'll tell, you know, whoever's putting it together, like, hey, we think we'd be a good fit. We can, you know, be a yeah. benefit to the event. So, you know, so yada, yes. yada, yada. So. More do's and don'ts for people that are trying to get shows booked yes. or whatever. Like, if you see a show advertised and there's no locals on it, like, just ask the person. Like, I, no disrespect to anybody at all because it ended up fine. But, like, I had a show on sale for over a month and then i just booked the two locals in the past week because they were just like i feel like i want to play that show i'm like yeah obviously go ahead i don't care <laughs> yeah. it's not complicated man like yeah. do you want to play a show ask yeah. now just do it yo Absolutely. i you know i have a filter for some bands versus other bands but you know if it makes sense to fit and you guys are cool with it like let's do it also, don't piss off Ben Talty. He's just so like. I'm not just, that. Just be logical. Well, if you, how if, can you piss Ben? Look at it. Look at how chill this motherfucker <laughs> is. If you've pissed off Ben, like there's it's no not even like a, questions, it, but just like you know, just ask the question. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ask questions. There's yeah, no because, like questions. that's the thing. Like like I said, being involved in the process. Like if you don't, if you're not eager to like put yourself out there, even if I turn you down for whatever reason. If you're not eager to like put yourself out there, be like, "Yo, that show looks cool. Like, I want to play it," and be like, at least have the conversation because if you don't, then I can't help you. So like, I, yeah. I will say, like, I kind of get it to an extent. Like, obviously, at a certain point as a band, if you want to do stuff, you have to like take the fucking initiative and like yeah. put yourself out there. But like, I understand the the idea, of, like, why that's hard for people because you put so much fucking work and so much like emphasis on this art that you're making, and yeah. like the the like getting rejected for all this hard work and heart that you've put into it is like sure. fucking brutal yeah. in your head. But like, you have to get over that's that. A, a yeah, point. that's a part. That, that's that like, is a, that is part of the process. You have to be able to have a bit of thick skin and take those fucking. Yeah. And a lot those. of, a lot of those bands, I mean, that I don't particularly book, like, I mean, they still play shows elsewhere, which I mean, they're getting their stage time or whatever, but you know, as much as I hate to say it, and a lot of people are into music and you know, musicians mm. that are talented and like do cool shit and like whatever they want to play shows great but like i've been doing this a long time like this is a business for me like yeah. i love i love bands i love doing this stuff i love setting people up i like making people happy that's i'm a i'm a people pleaser so i'm in a crowd pleasing industry mm -hmm. but at the end of the day like it has to make sense i have to make money or else this is for nothing right so you know not to disrespect any bands or anything like that but it's just like yo dude like if your band is not great or you were asking for something i can't give you like it's just business man like yeah i mm. i feel bad on some level but like i gotta move on yeah. and there's you know would not to overshadow whatever but like there's a lot of crazy shit coming between now and like february of next year and like you're gonna see it and then you're gonna be like i want to play that show and i'm like yeah i don't know man so, so. <clears throat> basically get good <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and also it's well, like it's get not your, get your get, a, get a get an opinion from somebody that doesn't give a shit. Like I used to tell people, I'm like people were like, "Oh, I want to do that." I'm like, "Your band's not very good." 
And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, that's not my nature. I don't want to, like, just... I don't like, think it's a mean thing to say. No, it's not. And also, like, a band's success like, doesn't fall squarely on your or any one yeah. individual. Yeah, I mean, I've, I personally, people like, that ask me for shows, like, over the past probably, like, two-ish years, maybe a little more, like, I've been not brutally honest, but I've just been like, look, like, I can't do that for you. Yeah. Like, I can't set that up for you. That just doesn't make any sense. Like, and, and in my opinion, that's fair as fuck. The fact good, that like you're even thing. giving somebody a response, that's fair as fuck. I respond to pretty much every email. Like I said, I have 400 emails in my inbox. I'm a little disorganized. I I need an intern. <laughs> I have. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, just, I was just talking to him the other day, right? And I messaged him. I was like, yo, Ben. I was like, I've had like 25 emails like today. I was like, oh, how do you manage this? So he sends me a screenshot of his inbox. He's like... I'm sorry, you were talking about you. He's got yeah. like fucking four hundred. Yeah, I so got. I'll shut the fuck I, up. <laughs> I'm in charge of all the emails for the Geo and Meatbag Show emails, my personal emails, which is two different emails: the It's Fine email and the fucking uh, the accident theory. I'm on email. top of yeah. I'm on top and of. And I have to fucking like I clean. I have to clean out those inboxes every day. Like yeah, I, I, I wake up, I go straight to my computer, and I have to fucking do. I'm that doing shit the ink box. Day. I'm doing a lot of manic dose stuff. But I'm, it ain't booking, booking shows. Booking shows involves a lot more fucking God emails fucking when you're a promoter damn, like, than it does. Yeah. And I work. I mean. I work for three venues. I get paid for three venues. Yep. Um, I also do stuff on the side that I think is worth it. Yeah. Like I said, shows up wherever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have. I hang any, out with Ben more. At any given moment, I have you know like five email tabs open. I'm just bouncing back and forth, and like I have a calendar. Like you should see my calendar; it's insane. <laughs> so I have a calendar that reflects like you know Yucca, Yucca North, the Nile, and then like I put in every other venues like yeah. shows that they have going. I go through probably once every two weeks and I put everybody else's shows on dates. So when people are like, Hey, I want to play whatever. Like I'm like, Oh, you're going up against this show. Like I, you know, I'm not going to pay you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's just like, you're going up against a, a juggernaut and like, it's just a bad time for you to be in town, unfortunately. So we just have to deal with that. But yeah, it's, it's a lot more complicated than me just being a dick and just being like, Oh, you're being whatever. And like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's financial at the end of the day. And I'm sorry that, it has to be that way because I don't take the constructive constructive criticism. Yeah, well, it's, know, it's always constructive. I know a lot of people like don't like to you know put money into music. Like they don't want to think about that sort of thing. And I'm like, yo, man, like who's gonna pay this band twenty five hundred bucks? Like it's pretty much me. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing all the marketing. So and and honestly, like I will say this from a musician's perspective because I've had to do this many many times. Some bands just need to go get their reps in, and it might need to be somewhere else. It might not need. To, it might need to be somewhere that's not a fucking you know that has popular bands all the time. Like go go fucking play some a bunch of go pl spend a year playing DIY shows. Like get your reps in, get good. You know what I mean? Play a that, couple backyard shows with three fucking people. Do there. that <laughs> yeah. honestly. Like I reckon, like with this with There's our a whole band, scene of that I had Phoenix. no intention of playing <laughs> yeah. with the band as big as Urethane for our first year. But it ended up uh, an amazing opportunity ended up and we and we ob obviously capitalized on it. But I wanted to play fucking local DIY bar oh, yeah. shows the whole fucking year just so we can get our reps. And by the time 2024 hit, we were a good band. Yeah, so we did a lot of things, not of the spiders wise, but Manic Does first show was technically fucking uh, in May, May 12th, I think. But after that, but there was a lot of prep work and promoting for like two years with the Manic Does to make sure everything looked professional and everything was good. And you guys like were that. so nervous. It was very cute. Yeah. <laughs> like we did that because like steve and i like we like having like cause the banners and shit like that so one thing like i like with bands is when you go to to csa and they they don't look like they're just trying it on right mm -hmm. like somebody that's obviously put money it's like okay you want to do this band shit like the yeah it's something as small as just like the paying the money to make sure your drum head has your band's logo Absolutely. on it and shit like that. Obviously, we've got the flyers and, and shit like that. Professional videos. Professional, I was going to say, you that. guys had videos out before you even played a show, right? Yeah. That's yeah. that's insane. Yeah, our music. Yeah. yeah we, it was like the music was recorded. Like, it was good. It sounded good. You put a video to it that you guys, I don't know how you shot it or whatever. We shot but it with, with these. By ourselves, yeah, yeah, but I'm just like, yo, like, that's insanity. Yeah. Like, I've never dealt with, like, and that's the thing. Like, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to judge anyone really, but it's like, there are a lot of new bands these guys um, all together. Yeah. Like there's a lot of new bands that are coming up and I'm just like, yo man, like a lot, a lot of these older bands and I get that people don't have time for a lot of stuff. They're starting families, all that stuff. But mm. um, I'm a single dad. I can do this. Shit. Oh, I know. But, Happy Father's Day, by the way. Too. Oh shit. Thank it's you. Father's Day. To the, to the dad. You have a kid? I do not. Yeah. We all cream pied somebody one time and now people nice. have to celebrate us. Yeah. Raising cream pie. Happy Hell Father's yes. Day. Fuck your children. Delicious treats. I feel like Wait, the, not, not the not children. Your child. Your child's great. Porn tinged 
podcast that we're doing here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, it's Did just we, overarching, like. Well, I mean, so yeah, he just so, 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 so Stephen just radiates sex. Uh, that's fuck. true. He, come, I'm a he comes home to sex, sex toys, symbol. Like, what the fuck do you think? Look at this meat. We got pillar of the community, sex symbol. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever you tiny want. head. <laughs> tiny head. Yeah. Tiny head. Get the fuck up. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm leaving this. No, you hey, I you really, I, I just want to say, I really appreciate this and what you guys are doing for the punk community. Like, I'm like, and it's, not it's not even just the punk community, but the I'd rather say like the rock. Music community. Oh, I want to. I want to have a rapper because, on like, one we, of these days. Hell because yeah. we we need I'm, this. We yeah, need, we sure. need something like this. You know right what the now. best part of also, this you, is? Also, if me. you want to be on the show, hit us up. Obviously, and your and your guys' energy, energy that you're it. bringing into the scene, we need that. We need more of that. Thanks, we need man. more people who want to like do the work and fucking put on good shows, and you know, be assets to the events. Yeah, you know but, what I mean, dude. The the best part of this podcast for me is like the fact that like I've been like going to shows in Phoenix forever and like playing in a band now for like a little bit, and like I I see all you guys like out at shows like we don't talk we don't have like a necessarily like a reason to or like common acquaintances we get here and now we're homies like yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's it's cool like that like we're gonna i, I feel like hopefully, it bridges, i feel like it bridges that gap and i'm i'm, I'm speaking from my own perspective because i'm not a musician i have very little talent in my body but like um yeah just to get together and like talk to people that like you see your shows or i book your band whatever like it's you know you make that connection between like regular people and regular people that just do other things and like but we're all trying to accomplish the same goal at the end of the day. Yeah, we're so, all part yeah, of the scene. Right. It's cool. Yeah. Like Ben shouted out somebody earlier on in the podcast, and that's Will Anderson. And that's kind of how I got connected with Ben like almost a decade ago. Yeah. This is the longest we've ever sat down and had a conversation. Yeah. See, like, yeah. Like, I don't even know this dude really. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Because awesome. uh, eventually, like, I'm, I'm going to have like a sound dude on, like one of the sound guys, and we'll have a whole segment on how not to piss off your sound guys. You're like that. That's yeah. going to take up the whole hour. But yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, but yeah, like that's that's what you got to like, make sure you have them on a about. good day, too. Hey, you know what? There are some cool sound guys. You just got to be fucking, you know, just be cool. Most man. Sound, you know, I was a sound just guy. Talk, just talk to, just talk to <laughs> what people. Does that interview you? I don't know. I just, yeah, no. yeah I don't know. You can so switch seats with me. Yeah. And we'll just, I just yeah. think if you talk to people decently and be assertive with what your interests are and what you're wanting, like, that's fine. Like, just be, you know, just fucking be vulnerable. Cool. Be honest, you know what I mean? Just talk to someone. Because there's so many, like, dude, I've been in fucking on tour in like Texas where we just crossed the border and had to like toss all of our weed and we're just sitting there bummed. And you know who we talked to? <laughs> the sound guy. And he's the one who's like, dude, we got you, man. Here you go. Fucking. Yeah, just be good. The sound always, guys will take care of you. Just be cool to them. Be man. cool with them. Always over under your fucking cables and don't turn your fucking amps up, amps up at the fucking source. Like, we got screamed. Tell them. Geo and I got screamed at, or Geo and the other guitar players and Square got screamed at one time. We we're playing the dive bar in Vegas and they were over under in cables. And this guy who was running sound, like ran sound for the who and shit. And he's just like, no, no, no. He's got the accent to no over under. Why? No over under. And then like You wanna fuck I, up your ca- your own I, cables? I like to when I drum and sing, I like to have my mic on the right side of that's just what I prefer. And he's like, Never in my life have I seen a drummer with the mic on his right side. <laughs> Just like, just flustered. I'm like, like I don't want to play here because fuck this guy. What, this do you want weird. me to be like this, or you want me to like, you know, be able to like? Because I, I don't need to fucking look. Hey, at Drew, this. try that. Like, I don't know, man. I'm not All going. To, I'm not yeah. going Garth Brooks mic status because I don't know. I like to headbang. That shit's falling off my fucking head. Yeah. Shout out Don Henley. Yeah. <laughs> but no it's like. Reason. <laughs> Just because of, of that mic situation. Yeah, dude. It's just, you know, it's just, it is what it is, man. I'm going to start trying to close this out. Yeah, I think it's a good time, actually. This yeah. has been great. Thank to, you. Guys you got anything you want to My high oh, wait, is wearing no. off and I can't smoke in here. So, you got anything you want to promote? Uh, no. No, we've got, so we got, what do you guys have coming up? You guys have a show? Yeah, we've got, uh, uh, man, we're playing with Guttermouth. That's going to be our tour oh, yeah, kickoff uh, oh, uh, show. Uh, Black once, Mountain Moonshine. Once I get that. EP. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 10-year anniversary. That's another banger. That's yeah. your yeah. next show. And then uh, I like to end every show. I should be your manager. That's your next show. Um, I think our next yeah, show is you the manager? No, the it. next show is your Black Mountain Moonshine 10-year anniversary show. Oh, is it? Yeah, and then the Mike and the Molotovs <laughs> EP release. <laughs> I didn't fucking know. Oh, you guys playing that, too? Yeah. yeah we're playing. Yeah. Dang. Oh, well, shit. Two different bands. We're playing with. Oh, right. Two different bands. Sorry. We're playing with fucking. What the fuck is their name? God damn it. I can't remember. Uh, we're playing. Green Day. Sorry. No. Sorry. You guys are playing with Green Day. Yeah, we're, we're playing with Green pocket. Day. You guys are for, playing, playing Innings we're, Festival we're playing, with Green Day. We're playing Day. the next First Friday. No. With Fucking, I'm hella sorry. I'm hella sorry. You guys are playing at Murphy's Law next First Friday with Green Day. We're not playing yeah. July 15th because I'm going to see AFI and Misfits. No, I'm. That's no. Fair. Yeah. That's, but, yeah, uh, that is fair. 
So one thing I like to like if they, what what band right now in the scene are you digging? Like like Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm really digging what you guys are doing. I'm digging what these guys are doing. Okay. Yeah. Um thank you. God, I I talked to so many people. Um I'll tell you what. Um a better problem. Shout out to So good. Yeah. yeah well, like actually like I shout like, them, shout them out I, to you. I I will be totally honest with you like I was not really sure about those dudes. I I know one of the dudes or whatever, but um they ended up playing Joe's um, birthday party thing yeah. or whatever. Yeah, we and there. I'm like, yo, they are so good. Mm-hmm. Like their drummer hits like a motherfucker and Fuck like, yeah. they just are so tight. And I'm like, I know that they, as a band, like wanted to play more all ages stuff when they were getting started. Cause they're kind of younger dudes or whatever. Totally, totally get it. Um, but they started playing a couple more, um, like 21 and up kind of shows or whatever. And they yeah. are just slaying it. I don't know how people are not on that boat right now. Cause <clears> they're killing it. Yeah. They, they've, they're yeah, talented they as fuck. Of, like, yeah. Who you got right now, Steven? Other than staring there's, off into space, there's this. Uh, no, I was just listening to what Ben was saying. Uh, there's this. There's this band that uh, that I've been really liking. It's not a punk rock band, but there's a band that I've really been digging in the scene over the last year, and they're called Don't Panic. And uh, yeah, is that fucking, a Hitchhiker's Guide reference? I believe it is, and Hitchhiker's Guide is one of my favorite movies. But honestly, uh, just such a solid band. They just have their shit together. Like they're on. They're all like uh, they're stupid technical shit but uh they're like all on click tracks and they have like lighting like timing and everything fucking like vocals on point stage presence on oh, point shit. just like fucking super pro band that are from phoenix and they're amazing to watch i just i love that band i really do and i love the music and it's like it's my kind of music that i like to listen to outside of like punk rock and stuff just like cool like prog rock kind of shit that just lets you just kind of like think rather than just like I liked it. You know, rush, shout rush, out, rush. Shout out them. I've been yeah, listening. shout out to Don't Panic. I've been listening to Rocket Steadman like recently. Oh, have you, you picked up I've on heard, them? I've heard of them. I just have not. Yeah, you should definitely check them I out. Will. Soon, like super dope best because I've been fucking with them a lot lately recently. And then also like yeah, like what Ben was saying, like because I shouted a better problem out the first episode. When oh yeah, that's this. cool. Yeah. So did uh, uh, every show, Joe. Yep. So like a better a problem. Out. Y'all are y'all are fucking killing it. They are uh, because you've been mentioned by three different people, me twice on, Fuck your, on yeah, that show that's cool. right now. I'll give a shout out to dubstep, just the jo- the whole genre. Yeah, it's sick. I just like dubstep. Is there a Phoenix dubstep scene? Name three artists. Three dubstep artists. Yeah, Doctor oh. P, Excision, and uh, oh, please don't think of one. I hope you can't. <laughs> I would not right um, now. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Oh, Skrillex. Skrillex. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, have you, have you, have you seen Skrillex lately? Yeah. He looks like fucking like Magnum P.I. and shit. He's got like turtlenecks and shit. I'm like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Some of these styles, bro. <coughs> I, I want to pull off like the cool boots and the feather hat, but I, that shit ain't happening. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the cigar coat, dude, with the pocket watch. That'd be so cool, but I can't pull that He's so hot out. drumming, though. Hey, yo, I Steve. would. Oh, my God. It'd suck. <laughs> Steve, give me a band you're, you're, you fucks with right now in the scene. Yeah, a better Steve, problem. Steve's been all about a better problem. Yeah, too, Steve's yeah. been so a better right, problem. Yeah, we're gonna juice them up a little bit. I want to, yeah. you know, what, I'll show, juice up a punk band real quick show. too. Wait, I'll oh. juice up a punk rock band, TV Tragedy, because those dudes have been fucking killing it since they added Geo on second fuck guitar. Yeah. I and they with just dropped a new TV single. Except Gio. Uh, uh, they just dropped a new <laughs> single that was recorded at Asteroid Records in Phoenix. Go check that shit out. It's fucking. These guys are on fire right now, bro. They're getting ready to do their yeah. ten year anniversary. They're tour. doing work. Those dudes do work. I mean, they played a fucking insane show with Co Defendants. Like, if you were not there, you don't. You just. I don't know. The fucking Steve was there. Egg, Co Defendants. Steve's co- nodding off camera. Like, not to like me. go off go. like on Co Defendants, but that band's just on a different level. But. uh TV tragedy is too, man. Like they're fucking, it's awesome, dude. Good yeah. to see those guys killing it. I think that is. I think that's all we got for today. Because uh, it's getting fucking hot. I want to go smoke a cigarette. He wants to smoke some smoke. Yeah. Ben wants to do Ben things. Ah, see, I'm a mystery. He just yeah, gets, no, I like yeah. that. Like I was like, what? Because in my head, was sitting there, I was like, what am I gonna, say about I'm just ben? gonna vanish. They're gonna be like, where do you go? Yeah, I'm, like, just, he, I'm at home already. I don't know what you guys yeah. are doing. Like, <laughs> yeah, ben you guys all it. shot your dicks off. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no. I'm thanks home. for chilling with us. Uh, fucking next week we've Thank got you. next week we've got the hot sauce guy coming on. Oh yeah, you know the band hot sauces guy. So yeah, that's cool. next week we're gonna try not to get sued by the hot ones. But I'm gonna end the episode now. <laughs> you guys harmonized. Yeah. No, that wasn't harmonizing at all.
<laughs> or you guys anyway. did your thingies. Yeah. All right. Thank goodbye, you. guys. We love you. It's over. <sighs> nice work, everybody. Right, I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.